Like your beats? Huh? It's a callback. Because we're right back where we... Forget it. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things you missed in Only Murders in the Building, Season 2. You think we're just going to tell you? Kind of felt like that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, why else am I here? Don't we kind of have to tell them if they're going to be part of it? For this list, we'll be looking at the hidden details, clues, and foreshadowing in this season's mystery at the Arconia. If you aren't caught up on both seasons, here is your spoiler warning. How do you think Poppy discovered the Arcatacombs? Share your theories in the comments below. Number 10. Bloody Mabel's Knitting Needle the grisly murder of Arconia board president Bunny Folger was a shock to everyone, especially the number one subject, Mabel Mora. Bunny is found in Mabel's apartment, apparently the victim of one of her knitting needles. How did the killer, who we learn is Poppy White, aka Becky Butler, know about Mabel's penchant for wielding the craft tool? Well, Mabel did confess in season one that she has a fantasy about putting them to a more pointed use. I'm in bed, I wake up, and there's a man standing over me. So I kick him right in the nuts and I grab my knitting needle and I take him down to the bone with that thing. Then she almost took out Oscar when he made the mistake of following her down an alley, later joking about always wanting to use it as a weapon. She didn't attack Bunny, but she sure got Glitter Guy on the subway. I'll take that hug now. Number 9. New Girl Connection one of the newcomers this season is Cara Delevingne's Alice Banks, an artist and gallery owner who slides into Mabel's DMs. I know this is insane given all you're going through, a stranger sending you a random video message, but I really love your mural and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. In episode one, Mabel attends an event at Alice's art collective, The Third Arm Gallery. In the second episode, though, we get a better look at the place during the day. You made it. Hey. This is nicely glammed down from the other night. Fans of Fox's New Girl will recognize the exterior of the industrial-style building. Both productions filmed at the Binford Lofts, located in the Arts District of downtown Los Angeles. And though the show was almost set in New York, New Girl takes place in LA, very far away from downtown NYC. Look, it's not a bad place to start from, as long as you have the right support. Why don't you come back and get to know our space? Number 8. Alice is a Fraud Speaking of Mabel's new love interest, like Oliver, we were instantly suspicious of Alice. It's pretty sketchy that she came into Mabel's life the day after Bunny's murder. When Mabel first meets up with her at the gallery, Alice even makes an offhand comment that alludes to these misgivings. You'll work back here. Um, sometimes I like to cry back here because I'm a fraud. Of course, we later find this to be true during Oliver's Son of Sam game. But at the gallery, Alice also tells Mabel about her idea for a future project. I had a thought about a video series on art is therapy. I can tell you're not the type of person to get through something by meditating. You need something more visceral. At the end of episode six, Mabel sees that Alice used her as inspiration, recreating her traumatic experiences in the very video series mentioned earlier. I'm sorry, you weren't meant to see it like this, not yet. Let me explain. Um. Number seven, Bunny's Last Day. <sighs> I can't believe this is my last day. Episode 3, The Last Day of Bunny Folger, is filled with little details. Some are more obvious than others, like Bunny's morning statement. But others may have flown under the radar, like the keychains of Evelyn's leg hanging up on the Arconiac's merch setup. Then there's Bunny's foreshadowing advice to her successor, Nina Lynn. Rotates the fetus, stimulates contractions. <sighs> Don't have it here. Charles almost has to deliver Nina's baby in the next episode. Other details include Bunny using the same bag that Oliver uses in the season premiere to gather things from her apartment. We also get answers to some lingering questions, including how and why Bunny was wearing an Only Murders in the Building hoodie the night she died. We, we have a gift for you, too. Um, there you are. Your very own merch. Number 6. Mrs. Gambolini and the Parrot Theory in episode 6, Detective Kreps calls all the podcasters to Bunny Folger's apartment under false pretenses. There wasn't any new evidence. Kreps just wanted to yell at everyone. All right, but you amateurs got things so twisted up that I'm getting calls from citizens asking me to look into a bird? A f***ing bird? The parrot theory is what they're calling it? 
Apparently, listeners latched onto this parrot theory. This is clearly a reference to the owl theory from the true crime docuseries The Staircase, which dug into the suspicious death of Kathleen Peterson. Mrs. Gambolini wasn't the culprit of the crime in Only Murders, but she was a witness. I know who did it. In the finale, when Poppy begins to talk, Mrs. Gambolini squawks in the background, probably because the bird recognizes her as Bunny's killer. Poppy's sneeze was also a huge giveaway, especially since it was Becky Butler's saliva that was found on the murder weapon. It's so strange. The killer sneezed when fleeing the crime scene. <laughs> Is that a crime to be allergic to rancid bird molting? Number five, Cinda lookalikes. Since we first met Cinda Canning back in the fourth episode of season one, it's been a running joke that her two assistants look just like her. Are you serious? You must know things that upset her that might make her feel vulnerable. I mean, sure. Human error, interruption, people who work for her but don't look like her. Yeah, we'd notice that one. We gradually get to know Poppy more, but Cindy only appears twice the second time being very briefly in season two. The writers used this lookalike setup to steer us in the direction of Cinda as Bunny's killer. You don't know what she's capable of. You don't know what she'd do to get what she wants. She had brown hair and glasses. Cinda Canning? I don't know her name, she was so bushy. It's assumed that the queen of true crime podcasts would be more of a criminal mastermind than her quiet, mistreated assistant Poppy, who we wouldn't suspect as being nosy or pushy. But never underestimate someone looking for their big break. I just wanted to make a good podcast. I just wanted Cinda to notice me. Number four. Who is Becky Butler? Because I'm Becky Butler. Many Only Murders fans were not expecting the twist in the penultimate episode. Poppy White is in fact the subject of Cindy Canning's most successful true crime podcast. There are some subtle clues though. This all has something to do with all is not okay in Oklahoma. I just can't figure out how. It's like I'm missing a puzzle piece somewhere. At the beginning of episode six, we see Poppy sit directly under the poster for All Is Not Okay in Oklahoma that specifically says, where is Becky Butler? And again, in episode nine, she's standing near one when Mabel comes to talk to her. Later, when Cinda scolds her about the mispronunciation of Chickasha, Poppy corrects her. Silvers, are you done interrupting me? Oh, sorry, I was just trying to be helpful. Oh, where was that help when I mispronounced Chickasha, Oklahoma for an entire podcast? It's a, it's Chickasha. Who would know this information better than a Chickasha native? Our theme this week, the stories we tell ourselves. Number three, Charles Sr.'s arrest. Charles, look at that building. I hit it big, we're gonna live there. In the second episode of the season, we get to see a young Charles Hayden Savage with his father, Charles Sr. We know that from Charles's past comments about his father, he was a heavy drinker who spent time in and out of jail, though it isn't explicitly stated what crimes he committed. Later in the episode, he's hauled away from Rose Cooper's apartment building in handcuffs, looking like he was just in a brawl. Dad? Dad? It's okay, buddy. What's happening? Come on, that's my son. Dad! But what happened? Well, according to Rose, she was in a violent relationship. Could Charles have gotten into a fight with Mr. Cooper? He tried to keep me safe from a rage-filled husband. I had to leave to keep us both safe. Number two, Only Murderers podcast. Coming this fall, Only Murderers in the building. That's good, Poppy. That's very good. I wrote that. Season one's shocking finale prepared us for Cindy Canning's podcast about the Arconia Three, but we actually got a little preview back in episode four of season one. Earlier in that episode, she praises Poppy's knack for taglines and assures her that her other skills would catch up. She's really got the voice down, doesn't she? Yeah. <laughs> and the writing will come. And did it ever. It was Poppy who came up with the title. And as we learned in the season two finale, she's an all around master storyteller. Why does Mabel get a podcast? Because she's pretty? Because she boldly dated the supposed killer? I do everything for you. Although her creative methods did involve the death of an innocent woman, the framing of innocent podcasters, and a slew of other consequences. We don't think Poppy White, AKA Becky Butler, will be teaching any classes. I don't normally consider promotions until year five, but uh, 
Yeah. Let me have a think on it. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Puzzle sweater. Mabel has a lot of sweaters, but this one makes multiple appearances. I've been feeling very inspired lately. You inspire me. Mabel's yellow hat. An affinity for yellow headwear goes back to her childhood. As I said, it's a lot. Don't be here if you don't like a lot. Bunny impressions. Charles and Oliver quote Bunny from season one's Tim Kono memorial. This won't take long unless you make it take long. This won't take long unless you make it take long. Yeah, but we're doing Bunny. Oh, Listen to this. Geez. Framing with puzzle pieces. Mabel puts the pieces together, literally. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Clues in the Credits Make a name for yourself in this city, and it can feel like the most sparkling place on earth. Full of fireworks and excitement. Only Murders in the Building fans know not to skip past the opening title sequence. And not just because the music is incredibly soothing. Each episode's credits offer some visual clues. In episode one, we can see a painting in Charles's window, like the Rose Cooper painting he finds in his apartment. Episode two shows the older woman walking a green bird instead of the usual dog. A nod to the introduction of Mrs. Gambolini. Even in death, Bunny figures out a way to give you the bird. Oh, that's a good line. In three, there's a champagne bottle next to Charles, while four shows flip-flops in a tree. It's hard to miss Oliver's groovy lava lamp in five and the glittery sun in six. Then there's the puzzle pieces, the blackout, the chicken, and the finale fireworks. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.